single. I'm in eighth grade and I go to UNAMI Middle School. My topic is in the shadows of neglect, shedding light onto the etiology, diagnosis, and treatment of mycetoma. The question I um, sought out to answer is how can we better understand mycetoma and what barriers prevent us from effectively curing or managing this disease? And my objective is to shed light onto this neglected disease along with providing a comprehensive analysis regarding mycetoma's diagnosis and preventive strategies. And just to get like a deeper understanding of what mycetoma is, mycetoma is a painless tumor-like swelling, and if it's left undetected, it can cause limb deformation, which results in severe disability, and um, which can affect a person's day-to-day -day life pretty severely. Now, if you see here, I put in an image which shows where all the cases have surfaced of mycetoma, and predominantly cases have surfaced in places such as Mexico, India, and Sudan. Mexico has 97% of bacterial-related cases. India has 58% of bacterial-related cases, while Sudan has 73% of fungi-related cases of mycetoma. Moving on to my literary review, the issue I sought was the cycle infection due to a long healing process and pre-infection continues without constant and proper treatment. And if you look here, I put an image of uh, just a brief thing of the cycle of mycetoma, which usually comes from a natural habitat, depending on where the patient is from, where, where the patient, like him or her, where they work. And a lot of times the mycetoma can enter from a cut, scrape, bruise, bite, anything. And once it gets onto the host, it can cause a lot of disfiguration unless it's attended to immediately. But a lot of times in a lot of places, which is not a lot of, which is another issue that a lot of people do not have enough knowledge or they don't understand what exactly mycetoma is and they don't have enough awareness about it. And another thing is that because of it's a long healing process, a lot of times don't people don't have enough time to relax or just take a minute and let it heal, which is when it gets severely worse, as you can see in the image here, in which it can cause a lot of problems for the patient, and it can get so bad to the point where they might have to get their foot amputated. Now, the study I did was that mycetoma presents itself as a fatal condition caused by chronic inflammation in the form of fungi bacterial infection, also known as emensitoma, which is the fungi-related one, and axomensitoma, which is the bacteria. And there are currently so many different diagnostic tools which are used to ensure an accurate and precise diagnosis of mycetoma. But even with that, a lot of times, there's not usually an accurate case. And because there are so many different methods, you can never be sure to whether you're actually going to be able to terminate the mycetoma or not. And there's so many, again, like there's many methods, there's no one way to heal, which is why it has a lot of similarities to cancer, to which there's no one, there's a lot of different methods, but there's no way to completely get rid of it because it, every technique has its advantage and disadvantage, disadvantages, excuse me. Now, moving on to my methodology, the accurate diagnosis of mycetoma requires a detailed clinical history along with your immigration status, travel history, if travel to end, um, endemic regions, a thorough physical examination, including an X-ray, ultrasound, MRI, and many more tests. Now, the problem with that is a lot of people who are in rural locations don't have access to that and can't afford a full physical test, which means it's harder for them to get the results they need or find and understand what type of mycetoma they have, or they can't get the advice they need from a doctor. Now, my results was that mycetoma needs to be differentiated from other infectious conditions and non-infectious lesions. Now, mycetoma is one of those diseases where there's a lot of different types of mycetoma. As you can see here, there's a lot of different types as soon as you go down to the cells. And a lot of times when doctors do all these results, the results can come back as inconclusive or invalid because it is really, really hard to pinpoint what type it is because it because it's compared to a lot of other diseases, a lot of other infectious diseases. And a lot of times it's neglected as well because they always assume, oh, it's just going to get better. Do not stress, which causes a lot of problems, especially when it comes to treatment, because there's no certain way to treat the disease because they are unaware of what type they have. So they are con So a lot of times the patient is struggling with many different types of treatments or they're trying different antibiotics. And a lot of times it's not working, which is when it gets very, very fatal, especially for the infected area. 
My conclusion, the question I sought out to answer was how can we better understand mycetoma and what barriers prevent us from effectively curing or managing this disease? My answer to this question is mycetoma lesions are clinically identified by, plain, by painless swelling with discharge. Prevention strategies can include personal hygiene, protective clothing, and early detection through improved health care in underserved communities. But a lot of times, on, on a lot of underserved communities, they don't have access to all these things, and they don't have enough access to get early detection when they need it, and they don't have enough time to take a break or to, again, like I mentioned before, heal. So a lot of times they just let it be and they like neglect it and they're like, it's okay, I need to go to work. I need to help my family. And that's sometimes they shouldn't be doing that, but they don't have a choice. In my research, my contribution is I hope to increase awareness about the seriousness of the disease so I can target those people who have been neglected for so long. Ne this disease has been neglected for a very long time and hopefully get these people who need the treatment. And we are still in urgent need for simple, accurate, reliable, and cost-effective and field-friendly diagnosis techniques. And I hope that my research can draw attention to that. Now, I'd like to thank um, Dr. Kate for always listening to us and providing us with the information we need and always trying to make sure we are heard. I'd like to thank Professor Virgil for being extremely patient and always teaching us new things every day. And I'd also like to thank the Gifted Gabber team for telling, for helping me understand that I can actually do this, because without them, I don't think I'd be able to write this. I think I'd be able to write this research paper. Thank you. A big round of applause to you. Amazing presentation, good pictures, and everything. You can stop sharing. And Dr. Kate, any questions for Saisha? I, I have um, mostly an observation now. Um, I think that we in the United States uh, don't have to worry about such diseases. And kind of like when they're out of sight, they're out of our mind. And we are the ones, the people in the United States who actually have the ability to do the research, find the most effective cure, and to distribute it to people, no matter their social or economic status, and um, I'm glad that you did this because it brings to light um, infectious diseases of poverty. And this is just one. And um, I hope that um, I hope that in some way you will eventually contribute to some of that uh, research yourself. So congratulations, nice job. And I would like to meet with you too about discussing these things, okay? It's wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, a big round of applause to Saisha.